Boo. Hello, Lost Souls, and welcome to the channel. Now, I'm not going to tell you to like this video and watch the ads because I know you will be doing it anyway. But before we get into tonight's video, I'd like to know what your childhood favorite horror movie was. Let me know in the comment section and based on the following quote, can you figure out what my favorite movie still is? The quote, so now you know what we are. Now you know what you are. Let me know if you can figure it out. Now, let's dive into those scary Home Alone stories and, oh, I have a special one as the first story, a military scary story. I hope you will all enjoy it. The dense fog hugged the ground as we approached the abandoned village, a place that even the locals dared not whisper about after sunset. Our unit had been dispatched on what was supposed to be a routine reconnaissance mission, but the heavy air and silence that met us spoke of something far from ordinary. As we moved through the outskirts, the remains of dilapidated houses stood like skeletal hands reaching out from the earth. I could barely see the man in front of me, let alone the top of the structures we passed. The village seemed to swallow sound, the usual chatter of wildlife eerily absent. Captain Alvarez signaled for us to halt near what looked like an old well. The brickwork was crumbling, overgrown with ivy, but it was the darkness within that drew my gaze. It was as if the blackness was pulsing, breathing. We set up camp here, Alvarez whispered, his voice barely carrying over the mist. I wanted to object. Something about this place felt wrong, deeply wrong. But discipline held my tongue. We pitched our tents with practiced efficiency, the silence among the squad mirroring the oppressive stillness of our surroundings. As night fell, the fog thickened, and with it, an unnerving chill seeped through my gear. The darkness seemed to press against the fabric of our tents, invasive and intent. I lay awake, staring at the tent ceiling, listening to the breaths of my sleeping comrades. It was then I heard it, a soft dragging sound like cloth over dirt. My heart pounded as I reached for my rifle, the metallic click seeming unnaturally loud in the quiet. The sound stopped, and for a moment, everything was silent. Then, just outside the tent, a child's giggle pierced the night. I froze, every instinct screaming that no child would be out here, not in this forsaken place. The giggle came again, closer this time, followed by a whisper. Come and find me. Against my better judgment, I crawled from the tent, my weapon held in front of me. The fog was so thick I could barely see my hands. But there it was again. That soft, eerie giggle, this time from behind. I spun around, my finger trembling on the trigger. Nothing but fog and the dark shapes of abandoned homes. Reveal yourself, I called into the mist, my voice cracking. No answer, just the whisper of wind through broken windows. I took a step forward, my boots sinking slightly into the soft earth. The sense of being watched was overwhelming, the hairs on my neck standing on end. I almost didn't see her, a small pale figure darting between the houses, her laughter a taunting echo. I followed, my rational mind screaming to turn back, to regroup with the others, but the soldier in me needed to know, needed to protect. The chase led me deeper into the village, past a decrepit church and towards the old schoolhouse. The building loomed out of the fog, its windows like blind eyes. The laughter stopped as abruptly as it had started, leaving a suffocating silence in its wake. I entered the schoolhouse, the door creaking ominously on its hinges. Inside, the air was thick with the smell of mold and decay. My flashlight beam cut through the darkness, revealing faded children's drawings on the walls and desks overturned in haste. Who's there? I called out, my voice swallowed by the shadows. No reply came, but the temperature dropped, my breath visible in the air. I moved further inside, the beam of my flashlight trembling with my hand. That's when I heard it soft sobbing coming from the back of the room. I approached slowly, my heart pounding in my chest. The light fell upon a small figure, curled up in the corner. Hey, it's okay. I'm here to help, I said gently, lowering my rifle. As I drew closer, the figure turned and my blood ran cold. It wasn't a child, not anymore. Its eyes were hollow, black pits, its skin pale and stretched tight over its bones. It smiled, a grotesque, unnatural curve of its lips, and lunged. I fired reflexively, 
the sound deafening in the enclosed space. The figure dissolved into mist, and for a moment I thought it was over. But then the laughter returned, louder, surrounding me, as dozens of shadows emerged from the walls. I ran, my breath ragged, the laughter chasing me back towards the camp. I burst into the clearing, screaming for the others, but the site was deserted. Their tents slashed, equipment scattered. The laughter crescendoed into a cacophony of whispers. Join us, join us, join us. I stumbled back to the well, the epicenter of this nightmare. Peering into it, the darkness stared back, and I felt a pull, a desire to jump, to end the madness. But I resisted, clutching my rifle, the only solid thing left. As dawn broke, the fog began to lift, and the village seemed just a village, the horrors of the night almost conceivable in the light. But the silence remained, the absence of my team a gaping wound. I knew then that I couldn't leave, not until I found them, or what was left of them. The village had secrets, and as I prepared to delve once again into its shadows, I understood finally. The horror wasn't in the fog or the darkness. It was in us, in our very bones, waiting to be released. I had been counting the days until this Saturday night, looking forward to a long, peaceful evening alone at home. My plan was simple. Some takeout, a few episodes of my favorite series, and perhaps a late-night video game session. It was the perfect setup for a night of relaxation. As the sun dipped below the horizon, I settled into my cozy living room, blissfully unaware of how drastically my night was about to change. The first hint that something was amiss came with a slight rustling sound outside the back door. I paused my show and listened intently. It was probably just a raccoon scavenging for food, I reassured myself. But then the noise grew louder, more deliberate. My heart skipped a beat when I heard what sounded like fingers tapping against the glass. I stood up, my previous relaxation replaced by a spike of adrenaline. I tiptoed to the kitchen to grab a flashlight before edging toward the back door. Peering through the curtains, I saw nothing but the dark outline of my backyard. Maybe my mind was playing tricks on me. I flicked on the porch light. Nothing. The backyard was empty. I let out a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding and chuckled at my own nervousness. But as I turned to head back to the living room, the real terror began. The sound of shattering glass from the front of the house pierced the quiet night. My sanctuary was violated. Someone was breaking into my home. Fear gripped me, but I forced my legs to move, rushing to my room to lock the door behind me. I dialed 911, whispering my address and situation into the phone. The dispatcher's calm voice was a stark contrast to my trembling form as I clutched the heaviest thing I could find, a trophy from my shelf. I heard footsteps heavy and menacing approaching. The wait for help felt interminable. Suddenly the footsteps stopped. Silence hung heavy, except for my ragged breathing. Then, without warning, the door handle jiggled. Someone was trying to get in. The door handle shook violently, each rattle a thunderous echo in the stillness of my room. I backed away, holding the trophy out in front of me like a shield. The wooden door creaked under the strain of repeated assaults. I knew it wouldn't hold much longer. The invader slammed against it with the weight of their body, and the doorframe splintered. I screamed, not out of fear alone, but to intimidate, to seem less like prey. It didn't work. The door burst open, revealing a masked intruder, clad entirely in black, a stark silhouette against the hallway light. Our eyes met, and for a moment time seemed to stop. Then reality crashed back as he lunged towards me, a gleaming knife in his hand. Instinct took over. I swung the trophy with all my might, connecting with his arm. The knife clattered to the floor and he howled in pain. Blood dripped from a gash where the trophy had struck but the wound only seemed to fuel his rage. He recovered quickly, advancing again with a grunt. I scrambled back, grabbing the fallen knife, my hands slick with sweat. He was relentless, coming at me with fists and fury. I dodged, the room a blur of motion, every thump of my heart loud in my ears. We struggled, the knife passing between us in a deadly dance. He was stronger, but I was desperate. With a wild cry, I slashed at him, the blade slicing through his shirt and into his skin. Blood stained his clothes, bright red against the dark fabric. 
He staggered back, surprise and pain etched across his masked face. I didn't wait to see more. Adrenaline pumping, I bolted from the room, the house now a labyrinthine trap. I had to escape, to survive. My feet pounded the floor as I darted through the hallway, the intruder's heavy footsteps echoing behind me. The house felt foreign, hostile, each shadow a potential threat. I glanced back only once to see him pursuing me, bloodied but undeterred. I reached the kitchen, gasping for air, my mind racing for a way out. The windows, too high. The back door, too far. I was running out of options and time. The sound of his approach grew louder, more menacing. I pulled open drawers frantically, searching for anything to use as a weapon. My hand closed around a heavy frying pan. It would have to do. As he rounded the corner into the kitchen, I swung with all my strength. The pan met his shoulder with a thud, and he grunted, momentarily faltering. I seized the moment, rushing past him to the back door. I fumbled with the lock, hands shaking violently. He recovered faster than I expected, charging toward me with a roar. Just as he reached out, I managed to throw open the door and stumbled outside into the cool night air. The backyard was dark, the moon obscured by thick clouds casting everything in ominous shadows. I ran across the grass, my breaths coming in sharp gasps. Behind me, I could hear the intruder's footsteps pounding on the ground, relentlessly pursuing. My only hope was to reach the fence and climb over it to freedom. I glanced back as I reached the fence, seeing him just a few yards behind. With a surge of fear-fueled strength, I climbed. My hands grasped the top, but as I pulled myself up, a hand clamped around my ankle. I kicked wildly, connecting with something soft. He cursed and let go. I scrambled over the fence, tumbling down into the alley on the other side. Pain shot through my ankle as I landed, but I forced myself to get up and keep moving. The alley was narrow and cluttered with bins and debris, a maze of obstacles. I limped as fast as I could, hearing the sound of the fence creaking as he began to climb over in pursuit. I ducked into a small recess between two buildings, pressing myself against the cold brick, barely daring to breathe. I could hear him land in the alley, his footsteps slow and searching. He was close. Too close. I prayed he would pass by without noticing my hiding spot. Minutes stretched like hours as his footsteps moved back and forth. Finally, they began to recede, heading back toward the street. I waited, counting to a hundred in my head before daring to peek out. The alley was empty. Relief washed over me, mingled with a surge of weariness. But I knew I couldn't rest, not yet. I moved out of the alley, limping toward the main street. I needed to find help. Someone with a phone so I could call the police again. Or maybe just a place to hide until morning. The streets were deserted, the night eerily silent except for the distant sound of a siren, maybe already coming for me. A light flickered in the distance at a late-night convenience store. With renewed hope, I heated towards it, every step a mixture of pain and determination. As I approached, I glanced around nervously, half expecting him to appear at any moment. Inside I begged the clerk to lock the door and call the police, my voice a hoarse whisper. The clerk nodded, eyes wide, and picked up the phone. I slumped against a shelf, finally allowing the terror of the night to wash over me in shaking waves. The police arrived within minutes, their questions sharp and urgent. I recounted everything, my words tumbling out in a frantic stream. They listened intently, taking notes, their faces grim. An officer escorted me to a patrol car for safety while they searched the area. Sitting in the back seat, I watched the flashing lights paint the dark street in strokes of red and blue. The sense of security was fragile, knowing he was still out there, possibly watching. The officers returned, their expressions tight. They hadn't found him, but they would patrol the area and keep an eye on my house. They drove me to the station to give a more detailed statement and to wait for news. Inside, the fluorescent lights were harsh, the walls too close. Every shadow seemed to move, every noise a potential threat. I tried to calm myself, to prepare for what came next, but my mind was a whirlwind of fear and fatigue. As dawn approached, an officer came over with a cup of coffee and a gentle smile. We'll catch him, he assured me. You're safe here. I nodded, clutching the warm cup, 
wanting to believe him. My eyes grew heavy, exhaustion finally overtaking terror, and I drifted into a fitful sleep. I woke with a start to the sound of quiet, sinister laughter. My heart leaped into my throat as I looked around the dimly lit room. It was empty, save for myself. The laughter echoed again, and I realized it was coming from outside. I walked to the window, peering out into the breaking dawn. There in the parking lot stood the dark figure, his silhouette outlined against the morning light. I recoiled, fear gripping me once more. How had he found me here? I backed away from the window, my mind racing for what to do next. I turned to call for help, but the door to the room opened slowly. My breath caught in my throat as the same masked figure stepped inside. The police station seemed impossibly empty, as if we were the only two souls in the world. He advanced and I stepped back, tripping over a chair. I fell, hitting the ground hard. As I looked up, he stood over me, the knife glinting ominously in his hand. I was there on the ground thinking that I had managed to escape, but then a dark shadow figure stood in front of me, and all I heard was the sound of his evil laugh. I had a long week, and I was looking forward to a relaxing Friday night. Something just for me. A good scary movie and a cold beer. I started the night with a soothing hot shower, which should have been relaxing. But under the steam and the patter of water, I felt a strange prickle at the back of my neck, like eyes watching me through the frosted glass. I shrugged it off as leftover tension from work, dried off, and headed downstairs in my robe, eager to start my evening. The house felt eerily silent as I made my way down the dimly lit hallway. Each step echoed loudly, unnaturally so, as if the walls themselves were amplifying the sound. The shadows seemed longer and darker than usual, stretching out like black claws reaching for me. I shook my head trying to dismiss the unsettling thoughts. It was just a house after all, just an empty house. In the kitchen I grabbed a beer from the fridge. The hiss of the cap being removed was loud in the stillness. I took a long sip, savoring the cold liquid, hoping it would calm my nerves. The silence was oppressive, wrapping around me like a thick suffocating blanket. I flipped on the TV, desperate for some noise, some distraction from the creeping dread that was beginning to take hold. I selected a horror movie from my streaming service, one I had been wanting to watch for a while. The familiar opening credits began to roll, but the usual excitement I felt for a good scare was absent. Instead, a sense of foreboding settled in my gut. The shadows on the screen seemed to merge with the shadows in the room, creating a seamless blend of fiction and reality that made my skin crawl. As the movie played, I found it hard to concentrate. My eyes kept darting to the dark corners of the room, half expecting to see something lurking there. Every creak of the house settling made my heart jump, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. I told myself it was just the movie getting to me, that I was letting my imagination run wild. But deep down, I knew it was more than that. A sudden, sharp noise from upstairs made me nearly drop my beer. It sounded like a door slamming shut. My pulse quickened as I stared up at the ceiling, listening intently. There was nothing but silence. I took a deep breath and tried to calm myself. It was an old house. Noises like that weren't unusual. But as I returned my attention to the TV, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was very wrong. I decided to check it out, if only to put my mind at ease. I turned off the TV and slowly made my way up the stairs, each step creaking under my weight. The air grew colder as I ascended, and a chill ran down my spine. At the top of the stairs I paused, listening. The hallway was dark, and I could barely make out the outlines of the doors. I reached for the light switch, but nothing happened. The power must have gone out. My heart was pounding in my chest as I stood there in the darkness, straining to hear any sound, any sign of movement. The silence was deafening. I took a tentative step forward, then another, moving towards my bedroom. As I reached for the doorknob, a cold gust of air blew past me, causing the door to creak open on its own. My breath caught in my throat as I peered into the room. The moonlight filtering through the window cast eerie shadows on the walls. Everything seemed in place, but there was an unmistakable sense of wrongness, like the room was holding its breath, 
waiting for something. I stepped inside and the door swung shut behind me with a loud bang, making me jump. My heart raced as I scanned the room, feeling more vulnerable and exposed than ever. In the corner of my eye I saw movement, a flicker of shadow against shadow. I turned quickly but there was nothing there. My nerves were frayed, my mind playing tricks on me. But as I stood there trying to steady my breathing, I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. Something was in the house with me. Something that wanted me to know it was there, watching, waiting. And it was just getting started. As I settled on the couch with my beer in hand, the house seemed quieter than usual. I chalked it up to the absence of my family who were out of town. I clicked play on the movie, the glow of the TV casting eerie shadows across the room. Halfway through the movie, a sudden thump from upstairs made my heart skip a beat. It was probably just the house settling, I told myself, trying not to let the fear creep in. The opening scene of the movie was filled with suspense, but my mind kept wandering back to that thump. The sound was too distinct, too purposeful. It echoed in my ears, growing louder with each replay in my mind. I took another swig of beer, hoping the alcohol would dull my nerves, but it only sharpened my senses. Every creak and groan of the house became a potential threat. The wind outside picked up, howling like a chorus of mournful spirits. It whipped through the trees, their branches scratching against the windows like skeletal fingers. The shadows they cast seemed to dance with a life of their own, mocking my attempts at rationality. I glanced at the clock. It was only 9 hal p.m., but it felt like midnight. Time seemed to stretch and distort, each minute a small eternity. A low hum filled the room, growing louder and more insistent. I realized it was coming from the basement. My heart pounded in my chest as I remembered that I hadn't been down there in weeks. The hum turned into a drone, then a series of rhythmic thumps, like something trying to escape from beneath the floor. I turned up the volume on the TV, but it did little to mask the unsettling noise. I tried to focus on the movie, but the protagonist's plight mirrored my own. He was trapped in a house, pursued by unseen forces. Each scene felt like a twisted reflection of my reality, and I couldn't shake the sense that I was being watched. I felt a prickling sensation at the back of my neck, as if unseen eyes were boring into me. I turned around quickly, but there was nothing there, just the empty, yawning darkness of the hallway. A crash from the kitchen made me jump, spilling beer on the couch. I bolted upright, my pulse racing. The kitchen light flickered, casting long, jittery shadows. I took a hesitant step towards the source of the noise, each movement heavy with dread. The closer I got, the colder the air became, until I could see my breath misting in front of me. I reached the doorway and peered inside. The kitchen was a mess. Cabinets hung open, their contents spilled across the floor. The refrigerator door swung on its hinges, and a puddle of milk spread like a sinister stain. I noticed a single deep scratch running across the counter as if made by something sharp and deliberate. My stomach churned with fear. This was no accident. Someone, or something, had been in my house. The phone rang suddenly, its shrill tone cutting through the silence like a knife. I grabbed it with shaking hands. Hello? I whispered, my voice barely audible. There was no response, only the faint sound of breathing on the other end. My skin crawled as the breathing grew louder more labored. Then a voice, distorted and guttural, whispered, I'm watching you. The line went dead, leaving me in a suffocating silence. I dropped the phone, my hands trembling uncontrollably. The walls seemed to close in around me, the shadows growing darker and more oppressive. Panic clawed at my throat, making it hard to breathe. I had to get out of the house, but my legs felt like lead. I forced myself to move, stumbling towards the front door. Each step felt like a monumental effort, the fear weighing me down. As I reached for the doorknob, the lights flickered and then went out, plunging the house into complete darkness. I was enveloped by an inky blackness that seemed almost tangible, pressing in on me from all sides. I fumbled for my phone, but my fingers were numb with fear. In the pitch black, I heard it. A soft, almost imperceptible whisper. You can't escape. The voice was right behind me, and I knew I was not alone. On my way to the kitchen for another beer, I caught a glimpse of something, 
a shadow, fleeting and formless, moving at the edge of my vision. I froze, squinting into the dim hallway. Nothing. Laughing nervously at my own jumpiness, I grabbed my beer and hurried back to the living room. The feeling of being watched grew stronger, suffocating. I tried to focus on the movie, but the shadow lurked in the corners of my mind. The living room felt colder, the air heavy with an unnatural chill. My breath came out in visible puffs, an oddity for a summer night. The TV screen flickered, casting eerie patterns of light and dark across the walls. Each flicker seemed to reveal something new, a movement, a shape, an anomaly in the room that wasn't there before. I rubbed my eyes, trying to clear my vision, but the shadows persisted, dancing just out of reach. The movie's plot, once engaging, now felt distant and irrelevant. I was hyper-aware of every creak and groan of the house, each one making my heart race. The shadow I'd seen earlier nagged at the edges of my mind, a dark presence that refused to be ignored. I felt like I was being watched, hunted by something unseen and malevolent. The darkness seemed to thicken, as if the house itself was closing in on me. Suddenly the TV screen went black, plunging the room into darkness. My reflection stared back at me from the blank screen, eyes wide with fear. Behind me, in the reflection, a dark shape loomed, tall and menacing. I spun around but the room was empty. The silence was deafening, pressing in on my eardrums until they ached. I reached for the remote, my hands shaking, and turned the TV back on. Static filled the screen, hissing like a thousand whispers. The static seemed to come alive, forming patterns and shapes that danced across the screen. My eyes strained to make sense of the chaos, but the more I stared, the more the shapes began to resemble faces, twisted grotesque faces, leering and mocking. I tried to look away, but I was transfixed, unable to tear my gaze from the horrifying spectacle. The faces seemed to move closer, pressing against the screen as if trying to break through. A loud crash from upstairs snapped me out of my trance. The sound was followed by a low, guttural growl that sent chills down my spine. I knew I had to check it out, but every instinct screamed at me to stay put, to lock myself in and wait for morning. But I couldn't ignore the noise. I grabbed a flashlight from the drawer, the beam weak and flickering, and made my way to the staircase. Each step was a battle against the paralyzing fear that gripped me. The staircase loomed before me like the entrance to a tomb, the darkness at the top impenetrable. As I climbed, the growling grew louder, a deep resonant sound that seemed to vibrate through my bones. I reached the top and shone the flashlight down the hallway. The beam cut through the darkness, illuminating the closed doors and casting long, ominous shadows. I took a deep breath and moved towards the source of the noise. The growling led me to the guest bedroom, a room that hadn't been used in months. The door was ajar, and the sound was louder here, almost deafening. I pushed the door open with a trembling hand, the flashlight beam revealing a scene of utter chaos. Furniture was overturned, sheets ripped to shreds, and deep gouges marred the walls. In the center of the room, a large dark shape hunched over, its back to me. The flashlight flickered, the beam dimming. My breath caught in my throat as the shape began to move, rising slowly to its full height. It turned to face me, and the flashlight beam sputtered out, plunging the room into darkness. I stood frozen, my heart pounding so hard I thought it might burst. In the pitch black I could hear it breathing, a slow, heavy sound that filled the room. The growl returned, low and menacing, and I knew that whatever it was, it was coming for me. I backed away my legs weak and unsteady. The shape moved closer, its presence a palpable force in the darkness. I fumbled for the light switch desperate to banish the shadows. My fingers found it, and with a flick the room was flooded with light. The shape was gone, leaving behind only the devastation it had wrought. But the growling persisted, echoing through the house. I knew then that I was not dealing with something human. Something ancient and evil had invaded my home and there was no escaping it. The phone rang, slicing through the silence like a razor. I jumped, nearly dropping my beer. The sudden noise felt invasive, like an alarm in a nightmare. I grabbed the phone with shaking hands, my heart pounding in my chest. Hello? I answered, my voice barely above a whisper. Static crackled on the other end, 
then a faint whisper, barely audible. Get out. My blood ran cold. I stared at the receiver, the words echoing in my mind. It had to be a prank, I told myself. Someone knew I was home alone and decided to mess with me. But the voice, it was so chilling, so devoid of any emotion. The line went dead, and I was left with the oppressive silence once again. I tried to calm myself, taking deep breaths. My mind raced with possibilities. Could it be one of my friends? But who would go to such lengths to scare me? I decided to call back, hoping to catch whoever it was off guard. I dialed the number displayed on the caller ID, but all I got was a mechanical voice. This number is no longer in service. A sense of dread settled over me. The phone slipped from my grasp, clattering to the floor. I looked around the room, feeling more vulnerable and exposed than ever. The walls seemed to close in, the shadows darker and more menacing. I could feel eyes on me, watching, waiting. I had to do something, anything, to shake this feeling. I walked to the front door, my footsteps echoing loudly in the stillness. I checked the locks, making sure they were secure. Then I moved to the windows, peering out into the darkness. The street outside was deserted, the houses dark and lifeless. I couldn't see anyone, but I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was out there, hidden in the shadows, watching my every move. As I turned away from the window, a soft sound reached my ears, a low, almost imperceptible whispering. I froze, straining to hear. The whispering grew louder, more distinct. It seemed to be coming from inside the house, drifting through the air like a malevolent presence. I followed the sound, my heart pounding in my chest. The whispering led me to the basement door. I stared at the door, my hand trembling as I reached for the knob. The air around me felt heavy, charged with an unseen force. I took a deep breath and opened the door, the hinges creaking loudly. The whispering intensified, echoing up from the darkness below. I flicked on the light switch, but nothing happened. The bulb must have burned out. I grabbed a flashlight from the kitchen drawer, the beam weak and flickering. The basement stairs loomed before me, descending into a black void. I hesitated, every instinct screaming at me to turn back. But I had to know what was down there, what was causing the whispers. Step by step, I made my way down the stairs, the wooden steps creaking under my weight. The air grew colder, and the whispering louder. It was like a chorus of voices, all speaking in hushed tones too low for me to understand. The beam of the flashlight danced across the walls, casting eerie shadows that seemed to move and shift. At the bottom of the stairs, I shone the flashlight around the basement. The light caught on something, an old dusty mirror propped against the far wall. In the dim reflection, I saw movement behind me, a dark shape looming just out of reach. I spun around, but there was nothing there. The whispering stopped, replaced by an oppressive silence that seemed to press in on me from all sides. I backed away, my heart racing. As I reached the stairs, the whispering started again, louder this time, more urgent. I scrambled up the steps, slamming the basement door behind me. My breathing was ragged, my mind racing. Whatever was in the basement, it was something beyond my comprehension, something dark and malevolent, and it wanted me out of the house. As the movie played on, I felt a sudden drop in temperature, a cold spot, right next to me on the couch. My breath misted in the air, and the hairs on my arms stood on end. I reached out, half expecting to touch someone but grasped only the chilly void. The room felt charged with a silent, waiting hostility that no amount of reasoning could dispel. The cold seeped into my bones, making me shiver uncontrollably. I wrapped the blanket tighter around myself but it did little to ward off the unnatural chill. It felt as if a presence had settled beside me, invisible but palpable. The air around me was thick with tension, every sound amplified, every shadow more sinister. I glanced around the room, my eyes darting to the darkest corners where the light from the TV couldn't reach. The movie's eerie soundtrack seemed to merge with the oppressive atmosphere, each note sending a new wave of dread through me. I tried to focus on the screen, but my attention kept drifting to the cold spot. 
It was as if something, or someone, was sitting right next to me, watching me with an unseen gaze. My heart pounded in my chest, each beat a deafening thud in the otherwise silent house. I decided to get up and move around, hoping that action would break the spell of fear. As I stood, I felt a distinct resistance, as if something icy and intangible was gripping my arm. I yanked my arm away, my breath coming in rapid, shallow gasps. Panic was setting in, but I forced myself to remain calm. It was just my imagination, I told myself. It had to be. I wandered into the kitchen, the tile floor icy beneath my bare feet. The cold spot seemed to follow me, the temperature dropping even further. I reached for a glass of water, but my hand was shaking so badly I almost dropped it. The water was frigid, and as I drank it felt like swallowing liquid ice. I set the glass down and leaned against the counter, trying to steady my nerves. A noise behind me made me jump, a soft, almost inaudible sigh. I spun around, but the kitchen was empty. My eyes scanned the room, seeking any sign of movement. The shadows seemed to writhe and twist, forming shapes that vanished as soon as I tried to focus on them. I felt like I was losing my mind, trapped in a waking nightmare from which there was no escape. I backed out of the kitchen and into the hallway, the cold spot following me like a malignant shadow. I could feel its icy fingers brushing against my skin, sending shivers down my spine. I glanced at the thermostat on the wall. It read a normal temperature, but the air around me was freezing. My breath came out in white puffs, and I could feel my fingers growing numb. I stumbled into the living room, my mind racing. I had to do something, anything, to dispel the fear that was gripping me. I grabbed my phone and dialed my best friend, praying they would pick up. The phone rang once, twice, then went straight to voicemail. I left a frantic message, my voice trembling, begging them to call me back. The feeling of isolation was crushing, the sense that I was utterly alone with whatever was haunting me. As I put the phone down, the lights flickered, casting the room into a strobe-like chaos. The cold spot intensified, and I could feel a presence closing in on me, malevolent and relentless. I backed away, my eyes wide with terror, but there was nowhere to go. The shadows seemed to come alive, reaching out for me with grasping tendrils of darkness. The air was filled with a low, whispering chant, words I couldn't understand, but which filled me with dread. I knew then that this was no ordinary haunting. Whatever was in the house with me was powerful and intelligent, a dark force that thrived on fear. I was trapped, a helpless pawn in a game I couldn't comprehend. As the cold tightened around me, I realized with a sickening certainty that this presence wasn't just trying to scare me. It was trying to break me. And it was succeeding. Heavy footsteps thudded above me definitely not a product of my imagination. No one else should have been in the house. Gripping the remote like a lifeline, I paused the movie. The footsteps moved from one room to another, deliberate and heavy. I called out, who's there? No answer. The footsteps stopped, then a loud bang, as if something or someone had slammed a door. I sat frozen on the couch, my breath coming in short, ragged gasps. The silence that followed was thick and suffocating, pressing down on me from all sides. I knew I should go upstairs and check, but the thought of what I might find paralyzed me with fear. My mind raced with images of intruders, ghosts, and worse. The house felt alive, pulsing with a malevolent energy that seeped into my bones. Gathering every ounce of courage, I stood up and grabbed the flashlight from the coffee table. My hands shook so violently I could barely keep the beam steady. I forced myself to move, each step towards the staircase feeling like walking into the jaws of a beast. The wooden stairs creaked under my weight, the sound echoing through the silent house like a death knell. As I ascended, the air grew colder, and I felt the familiar icy presence return, trailing behind me like a shadow. At the top of the stairs, I paused, listening. The house seemed to hold its breath, the oppressive silence amplifying my fear. I took a deep breath and edged towards the master bedroom, where the footsteps had stopped. The door to the master bedroom was slightly ajar. I pushed it open with a trembling hand, the hinges creaking loudly. The room was dark, the only light coming from the moon filtering through the curtains. 
I swept the flashlight beam across the room, illuminating the bed, the dresser, and the closet. Everything seemed in place, but the sense of wrongness was overwhelming. Then I saw it, a figure standing by the window, its back to me. My heart leaped into my throat, and I almost dropped the flashlight. The figure was tall and thin, with long, disheveled hair hanging down its back. It stood completely still, as if waiting. I opened my mouth to speak, but no sound came out. The figure turned slowly and my blood ran cold. The face was pale, almost translucent, with eyes that were dark, empty voids. Its mouth twisted into a grotesque smile, and it began to move towards me, its movements jerky and unnatural. I stumbled back, the flashlight beam shaking wildly. The air grew colder, and the figure's presence seemed to fill the room, pushing out all warmth and light. I turned and ran, my footsteps echoing loudly as I fled down the hallway. Behind me, I could hear the figure's footsteps, slow and deliberate, following me. I reached the stairs and practically threw myself down them, the flashlight slipping from my grasp and clattering to the floor. I landed hard, pain jolting through my body, but I didn't stop. I scrambled to my feet and ran for the front door. I fumbled with the lock, my hands shaking uncontrollably. The footsteps were getting closer, the figure descending the stairs with an eerie calmness. I finally managed to unlock the door and yanked it open, only to be met with a blast of icy wind. The darkness outside seemed impenetrable, a void that threatened to swallow me whole. I turned back to the house, my mind a whirlwind of fear and confusion. The figure was at the bottom of the stairs now, its dark eyes fixed on me. It raised a hand, pointing directly at me, and whispered something I couldn't understand. The words sent a wave of dread crashing over me, and I stumbled back tripping over the threshold and falling into the darkness outside. The cold was unbearable, seeping into my very soul. I crawled away from the house, my breath coming in ragged gasps. I glanced back and saw the figure standing in the doorway, watching me with those empty eyes. It didn't move, but I could feel its presence, a dark weight pressing down on me. I knew then that I couldn't stay here, couldn't face whatever evil had taken over my home. I had to get away, but deep down, I knew there was no escaping it. The lights flickered and then died, plunging me into darkness. The TV blinked out, leaving only the sound of my ragged breathing. I fumbled for my phone, its screen a meager light in the consuming blackness. As I turned on the flashlight, a shadow darted across the beam. I wasn't alone. I dialed 911, my fingers trembling, but all I got was static. The house was cutting me off from the world. The darkness felt alive, pressing in on me from all sides. I could hear my heartbeat echoing in my ears, a frantic, desperate rhythm. The weak light from my phone barely pierced the oppressive blackness, casting long, flickering shadows that seemed to dance and twist with malevolent intent. I was alone, isolated from the world by some unseen force. I stumbled towards the hallway, my legs weak and unsteady. The air grew colder with each step, the chill seeping into my bones. As I moved, I heard it. A low, guttural whisper, like a voice speaking from the depths of a nightmare. The words were unintelligible, but the tone was clear. It was a voice filled with malice and hunger. I forced myself to keep moving, my breath coming in shallow gasps. I reached the kitchen, my hands shaking as I fumbled for the drawer where I kept a flashlight. The beam was stronger than my phone's, cutting through the darkness, but it did little to dispel the sense of dread that clung to me like a second skin. The whispering grew louder, more insistent, filling the room with its sinister presence. I backed away, the flashlight beam trembling as I swung it around the room. A figure stood at the far end of the kitchen, barely visible in the dim light. It was tall and thin, with long dark hair obscuring its face. It moved with a slow, deliberate grace, each step echoing through the silence like a death knell. I raised the flashlight, the beam revealing a pale, twisted face with empty, hollow eyes. The figure smiled, a grotesque, inhuman expression that chilled me to the core. The power surged back on, the sudden light blinding me for a moment. When my vision cleared, the figure was gone. I was alone in the kitchen, but the sense of being watched was stronger than ever. The house was playing with me, toying with my fear. I had to get out, had to escape this waking nightmare. 
I ran to the front door, but it wouldn't budge. It was as if the house itself was holding it shut, trapping me inside. Panic set in, my mind racing as I searched for another way out. The windows were all locked, and my attempts to break them were futile. The whispering returned, louder and more menacing, filling the air with its dark chant. I backed into the living room, my eyes darting around for any sign of the figure. The room seemed to close in on me, the shadows growing darker and more oppressive. A loud crash from upstairs made me jump, the sound echoing through the silent house. I knew I had to face whatever was up there, had to confront the source of this terror. I climbed the stairs, each step a battle against the paralyzing fear that gripped me. The whispering followed me, a constant sinister presence that seemed to seep into my very soul. At the top of the stairs, the hallway stretched out before me, dark and foreboding. I moved towards the master bedroom, the door ajar and the room beyond filled with shadows. I pushed the door open with a trembling hand, the flashlight beam revealing a scene of chaos. Furniture was overturned, and deep gouges marred the walls. In the center of the room, the figure stood, its eyes locked on mine. The figure raised a hand pointing directly at me, and the whispering reached a fever pitch, the words finally clear. You cannot escape. The power surged again, the lights flickering wildly before dying out completely. I was plunged back into darkness, the figure's empty eyes the last thing I saw before everything went black. I knew then that I was trapped, caught in a web of fear and darkness from which there was no escape. I edged towards the stairs, flashlight leading the way. Every creak and groan of the old wooden steps underfoot sounded like a scream in the silent house. At the top of the stairs, the master bedroom door creaked open by itself. I peered inside, the flashlight beam trembling. The room was a mess. Drawers pulled out, contents strewn, and on the mirror, written in the dust, nowhere to hide. My heart pounded in my chest, each beat echoing in the suffocating silence. The words on the mirror seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy, mocking my attempts to escape. I stepped into the room, the flashlight beam catching on shards of broken glass glittering like malevolent eyes on the floor. The cold presence I had felt earlier was stronger here oppressive and suffocating. A low guttural growl rumbled through the room, vibrating through my bones. I spun around, the flashlight beam catching a fleeting glimpse of a dark shape darting into the shadows. My hands shook uncontrollably, the flashlight's beam jerking erratically as I tried to keep it steady. The growl grew louder, more insistent, filling the room with its ominous resonance. I moved towards the closet, the door hanging ajar. The air grew colder with each step, my breath misting in the frigid air. The whispering returned, louder now, the words clear and menacing. You will never leave. I reached for the closet door, my hand trembling. With a deep breath I yanked it open, the flashlight beam piercing the darkness inside. The closet was empty, but the sense of presence was overwhelming. I could feel eyes on me, watching from the shadows. I backed away, my heart racing and stumbled over something on the floor. I fell hard, the flashlight slipping from my grasp and rolling across the room, casting wild, erratic beams of light. I scrambled to my feet, the whispering now a deafening chorus in my ears. As I reached for the flashlight, the room seemed to close in on me, the walls pressing inward. The shadows grew darker, more tangible, as if they were alive, writhing and twisting around me. The growl intensified, a low, guttural rumble that shook the very floorboards. I grabbed the flashlight and swung it around wildly, desperately trying to pierce the darkness. The beam caught on the mirror again, and my blood ran cold. My reflection stared back at me, but it wasn't my own face. The eyes were hollow, empty voids, and the mouth twisted into a grotesque, mocking grin. The reflection raised a hand, pointing directly at me and whispered, You cannot escape yourself. I stumbled back, my mind reeling with terror and confusion. A sudden, sharp pain shot through my head and I fell to my knees, clutching my temples. The whispering voices filled my mind, a cacophony of torment and despair. I could feel the darkness closing in, seeping into my very being, twisting my thoughts and emotions. I screamed, but the sound was swallowed by the oppressive silence of the room. 
The pain intensified, and I felt myself slipping away, the edges of my vision darkening. The room seemed to warp and twist around me, reality bending under the weight of the malevolent presence. I could feel it inside me, a cold, dark force that consumed everything it touched. My thoughts grew disjointed, fragmented, as the darkness took hold. In a final, desperate effort, I focused on the flashlight, its weak beam a beacon in the encroaching darkness. I forced myself to stand, the whispering voices screaming in my mind. With every ounce of strength I had left, I stumbled towards the door, the flashlight's beam guiding me through the twisting shadows. I reached the hallway, the air thick with dread and despair. The growling followed me, a constant reminder of the darkness that had taken root inside me. I knew there was no escaping it, no outrunning the malevolent force that now controlled my every thought and action. The house had become a prison, and I was its captive, trapped in a nightmare from which there was no waking. The realization hit me like a physical blow. I was no longer alone in my own mind. Rewrite Chapter 8. Add nine paragraphs and make it more dark and terrifying and humanize it. Make sure to end the story with the following. I knew I was not going to survive as I saw the sharp blade slashing down on me. I edged towards the stairs, flashlight leading the way. Every creak and groan of the old wooden steps underfoot sounded like a scream in the silent house. At the top of the stairs, the master bedroom door creaked open by itself. I peered inside, the flashlight beam trembling. The room was a mess, drawers pulled out, contents strewn. And on the mirror, written in the dust, nowhere to hide. My heart pounded in my chest, each beat echoing in the suffocating silence. The words on the mirror seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy, mocking my attempts to escape. I stepped into the room, the flashlight beam catching on shards of broken glass glittering like malevolent eyes on the floor. The cold presence I had felt earlier was stronger here, oppressive and suffocating. A low, guttural growl rumbled through the room, vibrating through my bones. I spun around, the flashlight beam catching a fleeting glimpse of a dark shape darting into the shadows. My hands shook uncontrollably, the flashlight's beam jerking erratically as I tried to keep it steady. The growl grew louder, more insistent, filling the room with its ominous resonance. I moved towards the closet, the door hanging ajar. The air grew colder with each step, my breath misting in the frigid air. The whispering returned, louder now, the words clear and menacing. You will never leave. I reached for the closet door, my hand trembling. With a deep breath, I yanked it open, the flashlight beam piercing the darkness inside. The closet was empty, but the sense of presence was overwhelming. I could feel eyes on me, watching from the shadows. I backed away, my heart racing, and stumbled over something on the floor. I fell hard, the flashlight slipping from my grasp and rolling across the room, casting wild, erratic beams of light. I scrambled to my feet, the whispering now a deafening chorus in my ears. As I reached for the flashlight, the room seemed to close in on me, the walls pressing inward. The shadows grew darker, more tangible, as if they were alive, writhing and twisting around me. The growl intensified, a low guttural rumble that shook the very floorboards. I grabbed the flashlight and swung it around wildly, desperately trying to pierce the darkness. The beam caught on the mirror again and my blood ran cold. My reflection stared back at me, but it wasn't my own face. The eyes were hollow, empty voids, and the mouth twisted into a grotesque, mocking grin. The reflection raised a hand, pointing directly at me and whispered, You cannot escape yourself. I stumbled back, my mind reeling with terror and confusion. A sudden sharp pain shot through my head, and I fell to my knees clutching my temples. The whispering voices filled my mind, a cacophony of torment and despair. I could feel the darkness closing in, seeping into my very being, twisting my thoughts and emotions. I screamed, but the sound was swallowed by the oppressive silence of the room. The pain intensified, and I felt myself slipping away, the edges of my vision darkening. The room seemed to warp and twist around me, reality bending under the weight of the malevolent presence. I could feel it inside me, a cold, dark force that consumed everything it touched. 
My thoughts grew disjointed, fragmented, as the darkness took hold. In a final desperate effort, I focused on the flashlight, its weak beam a beacon in the encroaching darkness. I forced myself to stand, the whispering voices screaming in my mind. With every ounce of strength I had left, I stumbled towards the door, the flashlight's beam guiding me through the twisting shadows. I reached the hallway, the air thick with dread and despair. The growling followed me, a constant reminder of the darkness that had taken root inside me. I knew there was no escaping it, no outrunning the malevolent force that now controlled my every thought and action. The house had become a prison, and I was its captive, trapped in a nightmare from which there was no waking. Then I saw it, standing at the top of the stairs, a figure shrouded in shadow, holding a gleaming blade. It moved towards me with a slow, deliberate grace, the blade reflecting the dim light from the flashlight. I backed away, my heart pounding in my chest, but there was nowhere to go. The figure raised the blade, and I knew I was not going to survive as I saw the sharp blade slashing down on me. The house was oppressively quiet, an unnatural stillness that clung to the walls like a suffocating shroud. Shadows twisted and stretched, forming grotesque shapes in the corners of my vision. The wind outside wailed like a morning banshee, rattling the windows and sending a shiver down my spine. I wandered through the dimly lit rooms, every creak of the floorboards amplifying my growing unease. The kitchen was empty, its darkened corners hiding nothing but my own fear. The living room was equally deserted, but the sense of being watched was inescapable. My heart thudded loudly in my chest as I checked the last room, finding nothing but silence. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination, but the feeling of dread lingered, heavy and oppressive. And back in my bedroom, I locked the door and sat on the edge of the bed, clutching my phone like a lifeline. Should I call the police? What would I say? That I was scared of shadows. They'd think I was crazy. The noise came again, a soft metallic scraping sound, like a knife being sharpened. My blood ran cold. It was closer now, unmistakably coming from inside the house. Panic set in, and I knew I wasn't alone. Summoning every ounce of courage, I grabbed a heavy lamp and crept towards the door. My breath came in shallow gasps, my hands trembling. I had to know who, or what, was out there. The noise grew louder each scrape sending a jolt of fear through my body. I dialed 911, my fingers fumbling on the buttons. The operator's calm voice seemed distant and surreal as I whispered my address, my voice trembling with terror. Stay on the line, she instructed, but her words were little comfort. Minutes stretched into an eternity as I waited for help, the fear gnawing at my sanity. I was alone, and the intruder was getting closer. I moved to the door, peering through a small crack, a dark figure loomed in the hallway, moving with deliberate slowness. My heart raced as the intruder paused, turning towards my room. His eyes, cold and devoid of emotion, locked onto mine. I slammed the door shut, shoving a dresser against it in a desperate bid for safety. The sound of footsteps quickened, heading straight for me. My sanctuary had become a trap, and there was no escape. The door shuddered under the force of the intruder's blows. I screamed for help my voice raw with desperation. The wood began to splinter, each crack a harbinger of the horror to come. With no other options, I prepared to fight for my life. The lamp in my hand felt woefully inadequate against the monster trying to break in. The door exploded inward, shards of wood flying. The killer stood there, a dark silhouette against the dim light. His eyes gleamed with a predatory malice and he moved with terrifying precision. I swung the lamp, striking his shoulder, but he barely flinched. He lunged at me and I stumbled backward, falling hard onto the floor. Pain erupted in my side as the knife pierced my flesh. I screamed, a raw, primal sound of agony and terror. My vision blurred as the world around me darkened. Desperation fueled my struggle. I kicked out, connecting with his knee, and scrambled toward my phone on the bed. The room spun and each movement was a battle against the encroaching darkness. The killer watched me, a cruel smile playing on his lips. He seemed to enjoy my futile attempts to escape. Blood soaked through my clothes, the pain almost unbearable, but I couldn't give up. I had to survive. 
With a final desperate effort, I reached the phone and managed to press send on my call to the police. The operator's voice was a distant echo. Help is on the way, she repeated, but I was slipping away. The last thing I saw before darkness claimed me was the killer standing over me, knife in hand, his face a mask of cold indifference. I awoke to chaos. Sirens wailed, lights flashed, and shadowy figures moved around me. Pain radiated from my side, a constant reminder of the attack. Paramedics were all over me, their hands gentle yet efficient as they tended to my wounds. The police were there too, searching the house. Their faces were grim, their voices filled with frustration. We found no one, one officer said, his tone edged with disbelief. Are you sure someone was here? Tears of fear and frustration welled up. He was here, I insisted, my voice weak. He tried to kill me, but their skeptical glances told me they didn't believe me. To them, it was just another case of hysteria. As the paramedics lifted me onto a stretcher, a sense of relief washed over me. I was leaving the house, escaping the nightmare that had unfolded within its walls. The ambulance was a beacon of safety, a promise of help and healing. The paramedics' reassuring words were a lifeline. You're going to be okay, she said her voice calm and soothing. We're taking you to the hospital. I nodded weakly, too exhausted to respond. As the ambulance doors closed, I allowed myself to relax for the first time. The nightmare was over. The ambulance sped through the night, its siren a distant wail. I lay back, eyes closed, focusing on my breathing. Pain throbbed in my side, but I was alive. That thought was my anchor keeping me from spiraling into panic. The paramedic checked my vitals, and her touch was gentle. You're doing great, she said with a small smile. I managed a weak nod, grateful for her kindness. But a sense of unease gnawed at me, refusing to let go. I glanced toward the front of the ambulance where the driver sat. His face was partially obscured by shadows, but there was something disturbingly familiar about him. My heart skipped a beat as recognition dawned. The driver turned slightly and our eyes met. A cold, malicious grin spread across his face, the same face that had haunted my nightmares. The killer was driving the ambulance. Panic surged through me, more intense than before. I tried to speak, to warn the paramedic, but my voice failed me. The killer's eyes held mine, a silent promise of more to come. Desperation gave me strength, I grabbed the paramedic's arm, my grip tight. It's him, I whispered, my voice barely audible. The killer, he's driving. Her eyes widened in shock and disbelief. The paramedic's reaction was swift. She turned to the driver, her face pale with fear. Stop the ambulance, she demanded. But the killer only laughed, a low, chilling sound that froze my blood. Hello, sweet souls. Let me know how you are enjoying the story by leaving me a comment in the comment section below. Now let's continue with the stories, and don't forget to hit the like button on this video. When I inherited my grandmother's old house, it felt like stepping back in time. The creaking wooden floors, the musty scent of aged wallpaper, and the countless knickknacks filled with memories made it seem like she had never left. My parents had warned me about the house's eerie history, but I brushed off their concerns as mere superstitions. I moved in on a stormy Saturday. Thunder rumbled through the air, and the downpour seemed to amplify every creak and groan of the ancient structure. As I unpacked, I found myself increasingly drawn to the attic. Grandma had always kept it locked, insisting there was nothing but old junk up there. But now, holding the ornate key I had found in her jewelry box, I felt a strange compulsion to explore. I climbed the narrow, rickety staircase that led to the attic. The door opened with a long, mournful creak, revealing a dark, dusty space filled with old furniture covered in white sheets. I stepped inside, my flashlight casting eerie shadows that danced across the room. I coughed as the thick dust filled my lungs, but my curiosity pushed me onward. In the corner I found an old trunk covered in cobwebs. As I opened it I discovered a collection of faded photographs and letters. The pictures were of my grandmother but there was something off about them. In each one, a shadowy figure lurked in the background, barely visible but unmistakably there. I shivered, 
feeling a chill that had nothing to do with the drafty attic. As I sifted through the letters, I realized they were all addressed to my grandmother from someone named Jonathan. The letters spoke of love and longing, but also of jealousy and rage. The last letter was the most disturbing. It was dated the day before my grandmother's death and spoke of finishing what we started. A loud thud echoed from the far side of the attic, making me jump. I swung the flashlight around, its beam landing on an old rocking chair that had started to move on its own. My heart pounded as I approached it, the air growing colder with each step. Suddenly the flashlight flickered and died, plunging me into darkness. I fumbled for my phone, using its screen to cast a weak light. The rocking chair had stopped moving, but the air was thick with a palpable sense of malevolence. I turned to leave, but the attic door slammed shut with a deafening bang. I was trapped. Panic set in as I frantically searched for a way out. In the dim light, I saw a figure standing by the trunk, its eyes glowing with a sinister light. It moved toward me slowly, its form becoming clearer with each step. It was Jonathan, the man from the letters, his face twisted in a grotesque mask of anger and madness. I backed away, my mind racing for an escape. Suddenly I felt a cold hand on my shoulder, freezing me in place. I turned my head slowly, dread filling my every pore. My heart stopped as I realized I was not alone. Hello? A voice whispered in my ear, sending a jolt of terror through my body. And then, the lights went out. In the pitch black darkness I heard the sound of breathing, shallow, ragged breaths that were not my own. The air grew colder, and I could feel the presence of something ancient and malevolent closing in. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. My body was paralyzed with fear. I felt a sharp, icy pain as something clawed at my arm, drawing blood. The metallic scent filled the air, mixing with the musty odor of the attic. My phone slipped from my hand, its light extinguishing as it hit the floor. A sinister laugh echoed around me, filling my ears with its dark, mocking tone. You shouldn't have come here, the voice hissed. Now, you'll join her. I stumbled backward, my foot catching on something unseen. I fell to the ground, my head striking the cold, hard floor. As I lay there, dazed and bleeding, I saw the shadowy figure looming over me, its eyes burning with an unholy fire. Help me. I managed to croak, but my voice was swallowed by the darkness. The figure bent down, its face inches from mine. I could see the twisted, nightmarish features of a man consumed by rage and madness. You're too late, it whispered, its breath cold against my skin. As consciousness slipped away, I heard the attic door creak open. Footsteps approached, heavy and deliberate. A new figure stood at the threshold, silhouetted against the faint light from the staircase. Time to finish what we started, the new figure said in a voice that sent a fresh wave of terror through me. And then everything went black. It was a stormy night when Sarah found herself alone at home. The wind howled outside, rattling the windows and making the old house creak. Thunder boomed, and flashes of lightning illuminated the shadows that seemed to dance on the walls. Sarah, a college student, had come home for a quiet weekend, but this night was anything but peaceful. The power had gone out an hour ago, plunging the house into darkness. Armed with only a flickering flashlight, she decided to pass the time by reading a book in the living room. She tried to ignore the uneasy feeling that gnawed at her, attributing it to the storm. But deep down she knew something was off. The sound of shuffling footsteps upstairs broke the silence, making her heart race. She called out, thinking it might be her younger brother playing a prank, but there was no response. Gathering her courage, she decided to investigate. The staircase groaned under her weight as she ascended, the beam of her flashlight trembling with each step. From the top, she noticed the door to her parents' bedroom ajar, a sliver of light spilling out. Taking a deep breath, she pushed the door open. The room was empty, but a strange, coppery smell filled the air. Her flashlight swept across the room, landing on the closet door, which was slightly open. Dread pooled in her stomach as she approached. With trembling hands, she flung the closet door open. The flashlight revealed a horrifying sight, the mutilated bodies of her parents, their faces frozen in terror. 
Blood smeared the walls, and organs hung grotesquely from the ceiling like some macabre decoration. Sarah's scream was drowned out by a sudden crack of thunder. Panic set in, and she stumbled backward, knocking over a small table. The noise echoed through the house, and she heard those shuffling footsteps again, this time coming down the hall. Heart pounding, she turned to see a figure emerging from the shadows. It was a man, tall and gaunt, with a twisted smile and blood-stained hands. His eyes gleamed with a malevolent hunger. Sarah fled, darting down the stairs and into the kitchen. She grabbed the largest knife she could find, her hands slick with sweat. The intruder's footsteps grew louder, closer. She could hear his raspy breathing, could almost feel his presence behind her. In a desperate bid for survival, she hid in the pantry, clutching the knife tightly. She tried to control her breathing, knowing that even the slightest sound could give her away. The kitchen door creaked open, and she heard the man enter. His footsteps were slow, deliberate, as if he were savoring the hunt. Suddenly, the pantry door was yanked open, and there he stood, grinning down at her. She screamed and lunged with the knife, but he caught her wrist with inhuman strength, twisting it until the knife clattered to the floor. He leaned in close, his breath hot and foul against her face. Shh, he whispered. This will only hurt for a moment. Sarah fought with all her might, but he was too strong. He raised a blood-stained butcher's knife, and with a swift, brutal motion, plunged it into her chest. Pain exploded through her body, and she gasped for air, feeling her life ebb away. As darkness closed in, she caught one last glimpse of his twisted smile. The last thing she heard was his chilling laughter, echoing through the house, blending with the storm outside. The next morning, the police found the house in eerie silence. The storm had passed, leaving only the carnage behind. They discovered Sarah's lifeless body in the pantry, her eyes wide open in eternal terror. The house, once a place of warmth and love, was now a gruesome crime scene, haunted by the memories of that fateful night. And somewhere out in the world, the killer roamed free, ready to strike again. It was a chilly Halloween night, and Alex found himself home alone for the first time. His parents had gone to a costume party, leaving him in charge of the house. The wind howled outside, and the trees cast eerie shadows that danced across the walls. The house was decorated with fake cobwebs and plastic skeletons, but little did Alex know, something far more sinister lurked in the shadows. Alex settled into the living room with a bowl of popcorn and a horror movie marathon. He laughed at the cheesy effects and predictable jump scares, feeling a bit braver with each passing minute. But as the clock struck midnight, a strange feeling crept over him, a sensation that he wasn't alone. The lights flickered and the TV screen went black. Alex sighed and got up to check the circuit breaker. As he moved through the darkened hallway, he heard a faint scratching sound coming from the basement. His heart pounded in his chest, but he convinced himself it was just a mouse. He descended the creaky stairs, each step echoing ominously. Reaching the bottom, Alex saw the basement door ajar, which was odd since he always kept it closed. He pushed it open slowly, and the scratching grew louder, more frantic. He switched on the light, and it flickered weakly, casting a dim glow over the cluttered room. In the corner, he saw a figure hunched over, clawing at the floor. Who's there? Alex called out, his voice trembling. The figure stopped and turned slowly. It was a man, his clothes tattered and stained with blood. His eyes were hollow, and his mouth twisted into a grotesque grin. I used to live here, the man rasped, but they buried me alive. Alex stumbled back, tripping over a pile of old boxes. He scrambled to his feet and ran up the stairs, slamming the basement door behind him. He grabbed his phone to call the police, but the line was dead. Panic set in as he heard footsteps ascending the basement stairs. He ran to the kitchen and grabbed the largest knife he could find. The footsteps grew closer, and the basement door creaked open. The man emerged, his body gaunt and skeletal, yet he moved with unnerving speed. His eyes locked onto Alex, and he whispered, You can't escape me. Alex backed into a corner, clutching the knife, his mind racing for a way out. The man lunged at him and Alex swung the knife wildly. It sliced through the air, meeting only resistance as the man vanished into a cloud of smoke. 
Alex's heart raced and he looked around, bewildered. Suddenly the lights went out again, plunging the house into darkness. Alex could hear the man's voice echoing around him, chanting an eerie incantation. Shadows twisted and writhed on the walls, forming grotesque shapes. Alex felt a cold hand grip his shoulder and he spun around, slashing with the knife. But there was nothing there. Desperation took over, and Alex ran to the front door, only to find it locked and the key missing. The windows were sealed shut, and he felt the walls closing in on him. The chanting grew louder, and Alex knew he had to find a way to break the spell. He remembered an old book of incantations his grandmother had given him, now stored in the attic. With trembling hands, he climbed the attic stairs, each step feeling like an eternity. He found the book buried under a pile of dusty old clothes and frantically flipped through the pages. The man's voice taunted him. You'll never find it in time. Finally, Alex found the counter curse. He recited the words aloud, his voice steady despite his fear. The air grew thick and the room seemed to pulse with energy. The man's laughter turned to screams as his form began to dissipate, drawn into a swirling vortex. The lights flickered back on and the house fell silent. Alex stood there panting, clutching the book. He had done it. He had banished the Crimson Visitor. But as he looked around, he realized the horror wasn't over. The floor was stained with blood and the house seemed darker, colder. Alex knew he could never forget this night. He would forever be haunted by the memory of the man who once lived in his home, buried alive and seeking revenge. And every Halloween, he would hear the faint scratching from the basement, a chilling reminder that some spirits never truly rest. And so every Halloween night, Alex stayed vigilant, knowing that the Crimson Visitor might one day return, seeking the soul who had dared to defy him. Hello again. Thank you for watching the video until the very end. This support that you are providing is amazing and I could not do it without you. Now the moment you have been waiting for. The poem, and let me know who you think I'm talking about. In twilight's hush where shadows dance, a specter lurks, a fleeting glance. Whispers ride on the chilly breeze, echoes of dread in ancient trees. Eyes gleam in the darkened deep, where nightmares stir, secrets keep. Fear crawls, a chill that won't depart. Beware the haunting of the heart. The end. Have sweet dreams, everyone. Did you hear that? No. Well, hopefully you survive the night.